And here we sit today with an economy that spiraled downwards. The President of the United States has concluded this, and he said this a year ago before a conference meeting with Republican members of Congress. He said that the New Deal under FDR, back in the Great Depression, actually did work, but it would have worked better if FDR hadn't lost his nerve. But, but FDR lost his nerve and was afraid he was spending too much money, so he pulled back. And when he pulled back in the second half of the 30s, then that's when you saw unemployment go up and you had a recession within a depression, according to the Keynesian economist on steroids named Barack Obama. <laughs> well, I'm not a Keynesian economist on steroids. I'm a free marketeer. I have read every word of Wealth of Nations, and I believe it. And they're celebrating the anniversary of the signature on the economic stimulus plan, STEM 1, and now they've got Son of STEM or STEM 2 they're trying to bring past us again for roughly $100 billion. Now, are Americans nervous about all of this? Absolutely, we are. And I tell you this story because that's how we got here. We got here with this whole string of TARP, the nationalization of eight huge entities, and a, an economic stimulus plan, and then on top of that, then, then we went right into what was next last summer in July, cap and trade, cap and tax that you know. Now, sometimes leadership will make a given advice that will be, don't argue the science, you've, you've already lost that argument, just argue the economics of cap and tax. Well, I will tell you if there's ever a premise that you disagree with, never concede a premise. Never, never concede a premise. The liberals, the environmentalists, the extremists, the Al Gores of the world were wrong on the science. And today we know it. And I have an Al Gore shower at my place, and I took my drill bit out with an eighth inch bit in it, and I drilled all the holes out so now I can take a shower in three minutes instead of 12. <laughs> Sorry, Al. But I've got a scoop shovel for you if you want to come any place in the 50 states in America. For the first time in the history of keeping records, there's snowfall on the ground in all 50 states. Um, it's tough to make an argument when the evidence is all around us with a snowy white wonder in a crystal cathedral. And so we went through all of these ramifications, and um, we, we came out the other side with this. The American people lost their faith in the government. They believed that they lost their handle on government, and they rose up. And we had Tea Party patriots that rose up across this country, the 912 group that met here last year. Go. Um, many other days. April 15th is another day. I was in South Carolina that day. I'll never forget that, the opportunity to be there and be part of that. Constitutional conservatives stepping up to take America back. You know, one thing that Sun Tzu wrote about was, no she hostum, no thine enemy. Now, who are we up against? And I want to define that enemy. They are liberals, they are progressives, they are Che Guevarians, they are Castroites, they're socialists, more enemies on this list, Gramsciites, ring anybody's bell, Trotskyites, Maoists, Stalinists, Leninists, Marxists. They're all our enemies. Who'd I leave out? I think I heard that. Uh, how about I go to Democratic Socialists? And I'm going to ask you to go to the DSAUSA.org website and take a look and see what you find there. The Democratic Socialists of America, they are the socialists. There is a game plan on there. That game plan looks suspiciously like President Obama's game plan. It says on there that they want to nationalize the major corporations and take them over. And they want to manage those for the benefit of the people affected by them. That would be for the trade unions and perhaps the customers. And so when I asked Timothy Geithner in writing, it was part of a hearing that we had, and so he's essentially under oath, present for me his exit strategy to denationalize these eight huge entities. Two months later, his seven-page letter came back, and after my lawyers analyzed it all, it came down to this. Well, I will do that if the time is right, and I'm the only one that will know. This is the president's plan. Don't believe he ever shed a tear over nationalizing any of those companies. It's in his playbook. The Democratic Socialists of America is the playbook that I've seen unfold. I ask you to go to that website 
and, um, and address that. And I could read you some things off of that, but the big pieces of the Obama agenda have been cap and tax, socialized medicine, comprehensive amnesty. I believe that any combination of those are transformative to America and debilitating to our liberty and our freedom. I want them all dead. I want to kill all those bills. And by the way, I don't want to meet with the President of the United States to see what other kind of toxic stew he's going to serve up to us. And it is a toxic stew. I mean, they started out where they, they were going to cook up this health care for America, so what do they do? They get a big pot out and they decide, how do you start with cooking up this stew? So they reached into that 15-year-old shelf and they pulled Hillary care off of it, that big old tainted soup bone. They dropped it down in that pot and started to cook up this single-payer socialized medicine. Then they found out that the flavor was tainted, so they threw a few more things in, thinking they could convince us we ought to eat that. And after all of these months of debate and negotiations, it comes down to this. If you start out with tainted stew, there is no part of it that Americans want. We don't want a pot full. We don't want a bowl full. We don't want a spoonful, a cup full, or any kind of measure of toxic stew called socialized medicine. We want it dead. <laughs> Throw it out and start over. And if the President of the United States wants to negotiate with the leaders of the Republicans, or if he wants to negotiate with the people who are leading philosophically among Republicans, or conservatives, or constitutional conservatives, here are the conditions, Mr. President. First, concede that that toxic stew has to be thrown out. That's one. Second one is, this reconciliation package, the idea of running two bills through, pass the Senate bill in the House, and then the negotiated piece that's going on right now in secret, bringing that through the Senate under reconciliation, which Democrats called the nuclear option. Now the wording's changed, reconciliation. That sounds real nice and gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling. It's the nuclear option when they named it before. Passing that bill through and jamming this in the American people directly against your will. That's what they want to do. That's what they're talking about doing. The president has got to say the whole package of Troika Care is off the list. And... And the nuclear option, reconciliation, is also off the table. And now Republicans need to make a concession. We need to say our complete holistic approach to this is a pretty big, complicated piece of legislation. However good the components are, let's also take that off the table because we know what happens. If you have two ideas out there and you've got to put them together in order to get the votes to get them to pass, it probably says that those ideas aren't good enough to stand on their own. I want standalone legislation. And I want standalone le legislation that the American people can see clearly is negotiated in the transparency of the light of day. And I want to start with this lawsuit abuse reform. The trial lawyers in this country. Some call them ambulance chasers. I call them trial lawyers. Are tapping into the health care costs in America to the tune of eight and a half percent. That's two hundred and three billion dollars a year, two trillion dollars over the course of a bill. And the troika will not take one dime out of the pockets of the trial lawyers. Let's start with that, Mr. President. If you're serious about negotiating, then let's do all of the things that I've said. Take all of those things off the table. Let's set lawsuit abuse reform up as a standalone. Let's pass that, put it on President Obama's desk as a measure of his sincerity and wanting to have bipartisan negotiations. <laughs> and if he will not do that, I guarantee you, we will get a lot, lot better deal after November, after the election. Thanks very much. God bless you.